edition of the Transition Guy. We're in San Antonio, we're attending a scale up summit, and today I have a guest, Monty Wyatt, who's been a coach for a number of years. And before I introduce Monty, it's interesting, most businesses when they start off, they have this phenomenal romance that I'm going to start my business and I want to grow it big. And it's the dream. It's the dream that everybody has. Am I going to be the next Apple? Am I going to be the next Uber? Or whatever. But the reality is, well, <laughs> you notice that very few businesses actually get that exponential growth. And there are reasons for that. And actually, Monty is writing a book on what really causes companies. What are the common traits? What are the things that actually allow businesses to gain the ex exponential growth? So Monty, glad to have you here. Appreciate it, Peter. Looking forward to it. So please tell us about exponential growth because this is really your area of expertise. You know, it's uh, very interesting. In, in researching exponential growth, there's so many things involved with it. It's not about a product. It's not about a person. It's about your system that you build your business around. Right. And, and too many folks, when they start their business, it is around a product. And they think we've got to keep this product going, mm -hmm. but it's much bigger than that. It's much bigger. So what have you noticed as you started to look at businesses? What kind of things do, the ones that actually achieve exponential growth, what makes them different? I'm going to start with a, a couple things. Number one is they have a clear strategy. Yep. They know what success looks like in how they need to be structured. What is the business model? And that is a first question that every business has to answer is what is our business model? How will we succeed? And there's got to be an opportunity that they're filling. There's got to be leverageability in the service or product that they provide. So when you talk about leverageability, what does that mean for them? It means that it, things can be duplicated. It means that we can get more done with less effort because to, to truly have exponential growth, we're in a worldwide market. Mm. If you can't expand to other countries easily, other markets easily, other states easily, you are not leverageable. <clears throat> and I think, and this is a confusion for most business owners, is very often what they'll think that by working harder, it's gonna get them to where they need to be when it's not really the case, it's actually starting to become a little bit more smarter. Why do you think companies don't leverage? Because it starts out as a job. It, yeah. it, it's a job for them instead of thinking of it as a business. Mm -hmm. And as a job, you're getting done with what's right in front of you. When it's a business, you have to step back and look at the whole world of where is the opportunity, where's the market, how do we continue to grow every single day. Now, I don't know what you found, but I find that when I work with a lot of clients, they don't work on the big things. They're still chewing the small things. Very much they have a team around them. No, actually, you know, they don't have a team. They have a group of people that they've hired that they don't use efficiently to their best potential. And really, they're still doing the same stupid shit that they did before with a lot of people around them, just as noise. Now, it probably leads us on to sort of the whole leadership and management, because I think that's one of the biggest weaknesses that entrepreneurs have. So, you said it right. Every exponential growth business has both leadership and management. And a part of so many businesses, it's based around the owner yeah. or based around the leader at that point, and everything has to go through them. And, and I've seen too many clients, too many businesses, that when things have to go through you, guess what? You're the bottleneck. And if you're the bottleneck, you can't make enough time to go after the things that need to be done because you have to have your hand in everything. Part of leadership is giving direction and expectation and then allowing your team, empowering your team to go do the work. And management is about, hey, you're inspecting what you expect and there's KPIs for every one of those areas that they have to be doing. Then you know they're doing the right things. But if we don't have leadership and management, you can't do what you're supposed to be doing. No, do you know it's fascinating you say that because to have leadership and management, you've very much got to have discipline. And this is the one thing I find that most entrepreneurs, they lack is discipline. They don't like routine. The sheer nature of an entrepreneur is they love their freedom. They want to do a bit of this, a bit of that, etc., which is absolutely fine. 
But the reality is a business in order, well, Vern says it very well, doesn't he? Routine sets you free. Yeah. And then he said that discipline. So what do you do to help entrepreneurs get that discipline? It's identifying what are your routines in your business. Routines should not be about a person. Routines should be about the business. What routines for meetings are we going to choose to have as, mm -hmm. a, as an organization? What routines are we going to have to review our progress, review our numbers? And when I talk numbers, it's about the actions that create the results. So it's about creating business routines. And if you create the routines around a person, they won't be routines very long. You've got to create routines about the business. Absolutely. So how do you help entrepreneurs get those routines in place and get those disciplines? Because you must, you must encounter a lot of resistance. Well, it's, it's interesting. I've got one client that I've been working with for three years and one of the first things I taught them was we've got to start with a daily huddle just so everybody's on the same page. We're identifying our priorities and we're, we're inspired for the day. Well, they pushed back and pushed back and it, it ebbed and flowed. It disappeared for a while, then it came back. Well, three years later, guess what? We're back doing them and they said, you know, three years ago, we really pushed back on this. And I said, yeah, you did and look where we are. And it's because they don't think communication is important. Mm. Communication, the more businesses I work with, communication is always the toughest thing or the most challenging thing that everybody's focused on or everybody misses because they don't think it's important. And also, a lot of my clients will come up with the reason that they don't have the time oh. because they're so busy. Communication improves your time. If we do the communication routines right, you don't have people knocking on your door, walking down, hey, do you have five minutes? No, we've got this communication right, so you can be more focused, you can be more intentional. And for all of you, for all of you people that have tuned in today, working faster, being the hamster in the hamster wheel, and running faster and faster and faster, isn't going to necessarily build this great business that you so desire. I mean, Roger Hamilton comes up with this really good concept. He says sometimes to speed up, you've got to slow down. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's not how great you can be as entrepreneurs, it's going to be how great you can actually build your teams. And that's the thing that I find is totally missing, is that the entrepreneur doesn't take the time out to make their people great. A few do, don't get me wrong, and they tend to be the ones that grow their business at a far more sort of rapid rate than all the others. You know, uh, so, so we're staying at a hotel. I, I fall asleep to Shark Tank, okay? Yep. So I fall asleep to Shark Tank. And it's just so amazing. These sharks are buying these, they think they're buying businesses. Or, or I should say, the people per selling to them are thinking they're selling a business. None of them are businesses. All they're selling are products. Yep. None of them have businesses in reality. No. They just have a product and they don't have a structure. They don't have leverage. They don't have predictability. They don't have scalability for that business. And that's what they go to the sharks for is to go get those things when they add all the things that the sharks provide. They aren't scalable yet. They're just buying a piece to bring into a bigger picture. So what advice would you give entrepreneurs out there? if they want to get exponential growth? What would be the top five, what would be Monty's top five things <laughs> that they need to do in order to get exponential growth? Well, number one, you gotta, you gotta have leadership and management. And leadership is caring for your people, empowering them to do their job. Management is making sure we're doing things right. You've got to have purpose. Number two, you gotta have purpose. And purpose is, bigger than profits. What is the impact that we're making to the world? And, and I would say number three is you, you've got to have continuous business development. You've got to have a system around how you're marketing, how you're selling, how you're servicing the customer so they come back. And, and number four, we've got to make sure we're developing our people. And people development has to occur every single day. No one, including us, yeah ever have fully arrived. And if you think you've fully arrived, 
you're starting to die. Well, that's the I think that's probably one of the biggest things we find. I mean, it's quite interesting being at the Scale Up Summit. There's a thousand entrepreneurs here actually learning with their leadership teams how to do business in this modern world. And the reality is this, folks, the world's changing. Yeah, the days where things would remain constant for a long period of time, those days are over. In fact, what you learned this year may not be no longer applicable next year because the rules keep changing. So yeah, absolutely. It's all about that learning. It's all about that self-development. It's all about that continuously being current. Absolutely. And number five? And, and number five is you gotta make it fun. And I, I really believe if you have fun in your business, people will want to work with you. If you are the tyrant, nobody's gonna wanna stay working with you. You've got to make it a fun environment. It's about the culture that you create. And you can guide define and live your culture, uh, but you have to choose the culture that's best for retention of people, best for excitement about the future, and, and best for the organization that you're wanting to build. And just for those of you out there, you, I mean, the best businesses out there have got all these things in place. The reality is they didn't just wake up one day and have all these things in place. It's a journey. And the question you've got to ask yourself is what are you doing Right. to take that first step on that journey to get your business ready for exponential growth. You know, thank you very much for coming on today, Monty. It's been a pleasure. Now, if this stuff has resonated with you and you want more information, head over to borka.com and get in contact. And remember, failing to learn is learning to fail.